Hi everyone. Today we're going to be looking at the second half of lesson 1.3, Key Features of Functions. In 1.3 day 1, we looked at graphs in general and talked about how to determine if they're a function and then how to find the domain and range and intercepts. We also looked at how to write the domain and range in interval notation. Today, we're going to continue to do those things, but we're going to look at three different types of functions today. Linear functions, quadratic functions, and absolute value functions. We're going to find the domain, range, and intercepts, just like we did in 1.3 day one, and then we're going to add in maximum and minimum today. So we're going to learn what is a maximum and minimum, how do you determine if it's a max or minimum, and how do you name the point where the maximum or minimum occurs? Let's go ahead and get started. The first type of function that we're going to look at today is a linear function. We focused on linear functions last trimester. You probably remember graphing lines in the form y equals mx plus b, where m is your slope and b is your y-intercept. Some of the equations that you see today are going to be in the form y equals mx plus b, but some of them are going to be written in function notation. f of x right here is function notation. It's the same thing as y equals. I'm going to start by graphing my equation. Remember that when we make the graph, we always start by putting the y-intercept on the y-axis. Here, the y-intercept is negative 2. So we'll go ahead and put a dot at negative 2 on our y-axis. Then the slope is the number in front of the x, so here our slope is 1 over 3. Remember that slope is rise over run. So the top number tells us how many to go up or down. Here, it's positive 1, so I'm going to go up 1. And remember that we always move to the right. So we're going to start at our y-intercept, and we're going to count up 1, and then write 3, 1, 2, 3, and make a dot right there. I like to get a few dots, so I'm going to continue going up 1 over 3. And then once I'm out of space going up 1, write 3, to get the other half of the line, we can just go down one, left three. I like to draw as many points as possible, especially here where we need to find the intercepts. It's going to be really important that you sketch the graph yourself and that you sketch it carefully. I went ahead and connected those with a straight line. And now let's go ahead and answer our questions. For the domain, remember the domain is the set of inputs or the x values in the function. And for domain, we're looking for the left boundary and the right boundary. Now, a line like this, it points forever to the left. So remember that if there's arrows on the end, that means that your domain is at one of the infinities. Negative infinity is my leftmost boundary. And since it points forever to the right as well, positive infinity is going to be our rightmost boundary. So the domain here is all real numbers. For the range, I'm looking at the y values, which are the lowest and highest points on the graph. Notice how this graph goes down and to the left forever over here. And it goes up and to the right forever over there. So the range will also be from negative infinity to positive infinity, all real numbers. For our intercepts now, just look at where the graph crosses the axes. The x-intercept is right here, and if we count over on the x-axis, we can see that that's at 6. So our x-intercept would be at 6, 0. And then our y-intercept is right there where it crosses the y-axis. We're going to label that as an ordered pair, 0, negative 2. When you do your homework, to find the intercepts, you're going to want to sketch out the line on graph paper. If you picked up your packet from the school, there's extra graph paper at the back that you can use. You could draw your own graph paper or print some out from the internet as well. Or if you absolutely do not have graph paper, you could always just go to desmos.com and you could type the equation into desmos and then you could see where it crosses the x and y axis for your intercepts. Now let's look at a constant function. This function here is y equals 4. Remember that any equation in the form y equal a number 
will always be a horizontal line. We looked at these last trimester as well. The line y equal four will be a horizontal line that crosses the y-axis at four, and then it goes straight across from left to right, like this. You'll see how every possible point on that line has the same y value, y equals four. No matter where you make dots on this line, the x value can be anything you want it to be, but the y value will always be four. So we have a horizontal line y equal four. For domain, we're looking at the x values of the function. So the left and the rightmost boundaries. Since this points to the left and right forever, the domain will also be from negative infinity to positive infinity or all real numbers. Our range is the y values. And this graph is unique in that it only touches one y value. The only y value it ever is is four. There isn't a left or a right here. It's just always equal to four. So your range is just going to be four. And you'll put a bracket on each side because it always touches four. For our intercepts now, for the x-intercept, we want to look at where the graph crosses the x-axis. You can see here it doesn't cross the x-axis, so our x-intercept is none. For the y-intercept, we can see that it crosses the y-axis right there at 4. We want to label that as an ordered pair, so 0, 4 is the y-intercept. You are going to find that all linear and constant functions, a constant function is just a special type of a linear function, all linear and constant functions have a domain of negative infinity to positive infinity. Go ahead and add that to your notes. Anytime we have a linear function in the form y equals mx plus b or f of x equals mx plus b or a constant function, it will always have a domain of all real numbers. Here's two problems for you to try on your own. You're going to state the domain, range, and intercepts of each function. Be sure to graph it first. I'd like you to pause the video right now, and you are going to graph these lines. Remember that f of x is the same as y. So for our first line, we're going to graph y equals negative 2x plus 4. And for our second line, we're going to graph y equals negative 3. Once you've made your graphs, you're going to label the domain range, and x and y intercepts. If one of them doesn't exist, just go ahead and write down the word none. Please pause the video now, and when you hit play again, I'll have the solutions posted. Pause your video. Here are your solutions. For the first problem, the slope was negative 2. Remember that if the slope is not written as a fraction, we can place it over 1. So negative 2 over 1 means down 2, right 1. The y-intercept was positive 4. So the first line, or the first dot that you should have made on your graph was at 4 for the y-intercept. Then you just go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. I did that, and I can see here that my domain is all real numbers. Remember, domain is the x values, and it points to the left forever, so I have negative infinity, and it points to the right forever, so we have positive infinity. The range is the y values, which are up and down. You can see that it goes down forever and it goes up forever. So the domain and range are both negative infinity to positive infinity. For the x and y intercepts, you just look at where the graph crosses the axes. The x intercept is here at 2, 0, and the y intercept is at 0, 4, the first point that we made on our graph. The second equation, f of x equals negative 3, is a constant function. It crosses the y-axis at negative 3, so right there, and it's a horizontal line. Its domain is also negative infinity to positive infinity, since it points to the left and to the right forever. But for the range, for the up and down, the lowest and highest, a constant function only touches one y-value, so just negative 3 and we have brackets on both ends. For x-intercept, there's none. It never crosses the x-axis. And for the y-intercept, you're at 0, negative 3. Before we look at quadratic and absolute value functions, let's talk about two more vocabulary words. A function has a maximum if it has a value 
that is greater than all other values. The maximum is going to be the highest point on the graph. So when you have a maximum, your graph will look something like this, where it has a highest point. That would be my maximum. If a function has a minimum, that means that it has a value that is less than all other values. This will be the lowest point on the graph. Your graph would look something like this. It has a lowest point. We call that the minimum. When we look at quadratic functions and absolute value functions, each of those functions will have either a maximum, a highest point, or a minimum, a lowest point. You're going to be asked first to tell whether the graph has a minimum or a maximum, and then you're going to be asked to label the ordered pair where the minimum or maximum is located. Here's our first example of a quadratic function. We're asked to state the domain, range, and intercepts of the function, then determine whether the graph has a minimum or a maximum. All quadratic functions are going to be the U-shaped graph like this. The special name for the graph of a quadratic is called a parabola. We're going to study quadratic functions and parabolas in more detail later in this course. For now, I'll give you the picture of the graph and you're going to be asked to start by finding the domain and the range. Remember that the domain is the x values of the function. So I'm looking for the lowest x, what's furthest to the left, and the highest x, what's furthest to the right. Since this graph has arrows on the end, we can tell that it is actually going to the left forever. If this were to continue, on the left side, it would go up and to the left forever. And on the right side, it would go up and to the right forever. So the domain will be all real numbers again, or negative infinity to positive infinity. All quadratic functions have a domain negative infinity to positive infinity. Go ahead and add that to your notes. All quadratic functions have domain negative infinity to positive infinity. Any U-shaped graph will have that domain. For the range, it's not going to be negative infinity to positive infinity because the arrows only point up or down on one of the directions. For my lowest value, it doesn't go down forever. You can see that the lowest it ever touches here is negative 9. Since it touches there, we're going to use a bracket. And then the highest value for the range, for the y value, it goes up forever, so that's a positive infinity. We'll always use a parenthesis for any of the infinities. Now for our intercepts, we just look at where it crosses the axes. For the x-intercept, we can see that there are two of them. There's one at negative 3, 0, and there's another at 3, 0. For the y-intercept, it only crosses the y-axis at one point, and that's right there at 0, negative 9. Now, for our new part today, we're going to decide if this function has a maximum or a minimum. Remember that the maximum is if the graph has a high point, and the minimum is if the graph has a low point. We can see that this graph has a minimum. It never goes below that value. So you're going to say that the function has a minimum, and that minimum is located at the point, and then we just name it as an ordered pair. x value 0, y value negative 9. Now we've looked at linear functions and quadratic functions, we're going to end today by looking at absolute value functions. An absolute value function will always be a V-shaped graph. Remember that these symbols right here, the vertical lines, that means absolute value. In lesson 1.4, we're going to look at how to graph these equations. So you'll be given this equation right here in lesson 1.4, and you'll actually make the graph. For today, we're going to give you the graph, we'll give you the picture, and you're just going to state the domain, range, intercepts, and whether it has a maximum or a minimum. Let's start with domain. Remember that the domain is the set of x values. And for x values, I'm looking for the furthest number to the left on the x-axis and the furthest number to the right on the x-axis. But since this graph has arrows on the ends, 
we can see that it's pointing down and to the left forever on this side, and it's pointing down and to the right forever on that side. That means that its leftmost boundary is negative infinity, since it goes to the left forever, and its right boundary is positive infinity, since it goes to the right forever. You'll find that all absolute value functions have a domain of negative infinity to infinity, or all real numbers. Go ahead and add that to your notes. Anytime you see a V-shaped graph, its domain will always be all real numbers. For the range, we need to look at the Y values. And we can see that for the lowest Y, it goes down forever. So negative infinity is my lowest Y value, but it doesn't go up forever. There's a high point on this graph. And you can see that the highest Y value it ever touches is six. So we would go from negative infinity to six. Six has a bracket since it touches the point six. For my x-intercept, we're gonna look at where it crosses the x-axis. You can see that there are two places it crosses the x-axis. One at negative six, zero, and the other at zero, zero. For the y-intercept, we're gonna look at where it crosses the y-axis, and it crosses the y-axis right there at zero, zero as well. So our y-intercept will also be zero, zero. As far as does the function have a maximum or minimum, remember that a maximum is if it has a high point and a minimum is if it has a low point. Well, this graph has a high point. The top of the graph right here is the highest point the graph will ever go. We call that a maximum. And then we wanna name the ordered pair where that maximum is located. Our ordered pair will be x, y. You can see that the x coordinate of that point is at negative three and the y coordinate is at positive six. So the function has a maximum at the point negative three, six. Let's end this lesson today by having you try two problems on your own. The first problem gives us the graph of a quadratic function. Notice how it's a U-shaped graph. The second graph gives us the graph of an absolute value function. It's the V-shaped graph. I'd like you to name the domain, range, and intercepts of the function, then determine whether it has a minimum or a maximum, and list the point where it's located. Please pause the video at this time and give the problems a try. Then when you hit play again, I'll have the solutions and we'll talk them through. Ready? Please pause your video. Here are your solutions. Remember the domain is the set of x values. And since the parabola in the first picture points down and to the left forever and down and to the right forever, it's gonna have a domain of negative infinity to positive infinity. Remember that all U-shaped graphs, all quadratic equations have a domain of negative infinity to positive infinity. For the range, I'm looking for the y values, the lowest point and the highest point. Since it goes down forever, the lowest point is negative infinity, and then the highest point, it goes up to two. It touches two, so we're gonna have a closed circle there, which is a bracket. The x-intercepts are just the points where it's crossing the x-axis. There's one there at negative two, zero, and a second at positive two, zero. For our y-intercept, we're looking at where it crosses the y-axis. That's there at zero, two. This has a maximum, since there's a highest point to the graph, and that maximum is located at the ordered pair 0, 2. Our second equation is an absolute value function. Notice how it has that V-shaped graph. Remember that all absolute value functions have a domain of negative infinity to positive infinity. For the range, this time, for the lowest value that y ever touches, the bottom of the graph we can see is at 2. It goes up forever, so we have positive infinity. The x-intercept is none, since that graph does not touch the x-axis. The y-intercept is right there at 0, 3. This graph has a minimum, since it has the low point, And that minimum is located at the ordered pair 1, 2. That's it for Lesson 1.3, Day 2. Thanks for watching, and good luck as you try some problems on your own. Remember, if you have any questions, please reach out to your math teacher. Bye.